Welcome to Kicking It With KO in partnership with Jackson Ultima. Today I'm so excited to be joined by Olympians and Canadian champions Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero. <laughs> Let's just get started from the very beginning. Um, how did you guys discover skating and why do you love it? I was two years old when my mom put me on the ice for the first time. She tells me that I hated it. I wanted uh, nothing to do with it. And, and she made it known to me that once I learned how to skate forward and backward, basic stuff, be a good Canadian, um, then I could quit. And by that time, uh, by the time I had the ability to actually enjoy what skating has to offer, uh, I loved it. And um, I, I, I had no desire to quit anymore. Both of my brothers started and learned to skate and then transitioned into hockey. I was uh, expected to do the same, but I fell in love with it uh, right in the first minute. And all I wanted to do was have a solo in the year end uh, ice show. Gotta have that solo. <laughs> How long have you guys been skating together now? Seven years, I think. Seventh season, I think. That's wild. I know. Um, so since you guys have been skating together for seven years, uh, what are some of your proudest highlight moments? For me, I think uh, qualifying for Pyeongchang is a big highlight, I think, for both of us. I, I tell people it's it's the best day of my life, and uh, it seems dramatic, but I genuinely think that it is. We were pretty heavy underdogs heading into the national championships, which, as you know, of course, is the qualifying event. And um we knew that we had to be perfect. And because of that, it was something that I had never experienced before. Even qualifying for Sochi, I was in, in a little bit of a different spot where it didn't have that pressure, that kind of like make it or break it situation. And um, it took a year. I mean, it was the accumulation of four years, of course, but it took a year of strategy leading up to that qualification. And uh, we ultimately did it when it counted. It wasn't perfect, but was obviously enough and I think I'm I just am so proud of us for that yes definitely as Kirsten said qualifying for the games there at the 2018 national championships definitely was the highlight was definitely a couple of roller coaster seasons leading into that there was uh, a couple highs a lot of really lows so just bringing that all together and having it all click on the exact right day definitely led to, uh, yes, as Kirst would say, would probably my best day on this planet so far. <laughs> Side note, I actually watched you guys skate when you qualified, um, sort of like that nationals. Mm -hmm. And there's very few times I cry in my life when it comes ah. to skating. And I got quite, I got very close, uh, mainly because <laughs> it was the smile on Mike's face literally didn't vanish for half the half of the program it was just plastered and it didn't move <laughs> i can remember you being because you were already finished competing the ladies went earlier and i remember you being on the shuttle that we took to to our competition you were relaxed you were in people clothes uh with friends and we were in obviously uh i mean you were probably at the back of the bus socializing and we were at the front being very focused and um yeah, I, re I that's it's funny what you remember about these things, and that's one of the memories that I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, what other goals do you have left? I think qualifying for Pyeongchang was our ultimate goal at the time. We didn't have any placement goals. Um, of course, we wanted to perform our best. We wanted to go to the Olympics. It wasn't a situation where we kind of made it there, so we rested on our on our on our laurels. We really wanted to perform to the best of our abilities, but we knew also that that wasn't going to get us any spectacular results. We ended up finishing 11th there and, and we skated almost to the best of our ability to put that in context for you. Um, but this time is a different story. I think back then we were focused on, um, you know, and the national championships and, and domestically placing and now our, our focus is global. We want to um, earn medals on the international scene and, and that will be our focus and our goal heading into Beijing 22, 2022, not just being there, but actually making a name for ourselves uh, in that top group when we are there. Yes, definitely. Uh, one of the highlights of the Pyeongchang Olympics uh, for me was watching the team event. We were right there in the kiss and cry, so close to the ice, so close to the action. The energy was just phenomenal to be able to take that in. 
So that has definitely made me uh, looking forward to being able to participate in that team event uh, next season and hopefully uh, secure Canada a medal. I would say <laughs> Yangcheng highlight is watching KO. <laughs> and you know what else? Watching the video of us watching KO is really fun too. That's my favorite moment of that Olympics actually, is not my actual skate, but seeing that video afterwards. No way, you're gonna make me cry. I cry a lot though, not like you. So <laughs> I cry a lot from happiness, but yeah, I think that was that was so special to be a part of. We also have a couple good uh, videos of our reactions too from the World Championships right after that. Yeah. All of us watching you going ham there in Italy. That was <laughs> quite the moment. Seats. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember Mike jumping up the stands and getting me a flag. Like the world's largest yeah. flag of all yeah. things too. Um, getting chased <laughs> by the organizers of the event. You can't go up there. I have to get a flag. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So how are you guys handling this year with it being super weird? Like what's happening? It's been pretty up and down, I think. I think that it's been hard for a lot of people. We are no exception. It has not been a walk in the park. It's difficult, I believe, to prepare for events and have yourself genuinely prepare for them mentally and then have them be canceled regardless of if it's warranted or not. I think you'll hear a lot of athletes say, and um, us included, that we understand why these things need to be canceled, but it doesn't make it any, any easier on the day in and day out training. And uh, try, of course, trying to find purpose and trying to find, trying to find ways to improve ourselves, because like we said, our ultimate goal is next season. But the only way we know how to do that is by competing and getting better. So not having these opportunities has been difficult. Um, we'll see what happens with the, the decision with the world championships. We are training for it uh, full speed ahead. So um, I think the only difference now is we've had a couple of these uh, circumstances where we've been training for something that didn't happen. So now we have a better understanding of how to put ourselves in the right place mentally uh, to be okay and to be happy and uh, improving each day and, and to be ready for uh, worlds if they happen or not. Yeah, training's uh, been tough without having that uh, long-term goal. Normally, we have our full season planned out uh, 12 months in advance. We know exactly what we're going to be doing in October, November, December. Everything is so uh, so well thought out and planned. And now, uh, without having that and just kind of being day-to-day -day trying to get better has uh, definitely been tough. But now... Uh, it's looking good for uh, the world championships. So it's definitely got, uh, we got our sights set on that and training is, uh, is going uh, very well right now. Uh, was the virtual challenge a little help in the direction or how weird was it? <laughs> You know what? We were in a tough spot heading in. I was um, recovering from an injury, so we hadn't been training a whole lot uh, leading up to it. Uh, we had hoped to participate in virtual sectionals, but my injury was not healed in time, so we didn't have that opportunity. And we kind of flip-flopped with virtual challenge because of our placement at nationals last year. We did have a buy uh, through the event, so we didn't have to do it in order to qualify for nationals this year. Um, but we weren't sure, should we take the opportunity to try to improve? Will it help us at all? Because it was so different. It was in an empty rink with no judges, just a camera. And, um, we, we hemmed and hawed about it for a few, uh, for a few days, I would say, uh, with Mike and I and our coaches and ultimately decided to do it. And I would say we were pleasantly surprised at how much we felt, uh, the competition, um, anxiety and feeling in a good way through the event. We didn't expect to be able to compare it so closely to a competition. And I will say that it was helpful for us to get feedback, feedback from judges, to get a score, to see our levels, things like this. And, um, and through that experience and that feedback, we've been able to make some, some necessary changes for within our programs for Worlds. So I think definitely helpful, but a weird experience. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, super weird. We weren't sure if it was going to feel like an event, it was going to feel like practice or what it was going to feel like at all. But uh, definitely, we had that uh, competition pressure that uh, 
bug in the stomach was definitely there, which was good. That was the whole point of uh, getting out there and participating in the event. But it was it was just weird. No judges, no competitors, just the coach in the arena, the cameraman was uh, not the easiest to get going. But uh, once once we got into the program, uh, it, it felt like a normal event. I just wasn't sure like who to present to. Like usually, I think you're like me, Ko, where like you, you we use that to to give us energy and to you know earn components. This is how we earn components by presenting to people. And there was just one camera, very bizarre. It was a weird experience, but I'm glad we did it ultimately. Totally. Um, I have to ask though because I was definitely watching challenge sitting on my pajamas. Uh, so what were you guys doing watching yourselves compete weeks after you competed? Similar, sitting on the couch in my pajamas, in my comfiest clothes. Um, that for me was the hardest part. I did not, I didn't like, uh, watching it so late after the fact. I think I'm sure you can relate to this as well, where when you compete, you don't necessarily remember what exactly you did when you were competing. Do you ever ask Ravi when you get on the, off the ice, like, what did I do on that jump? And that was that was it for us. I knew that unless it's 100% a perfect element or 100% a missed element, there are so many degrees in the middle of, you know, varying, um, varying degrees of success, you know? And so for an hour after our long program, I was asking Mike, what did I do on this? What did I do on that? And because of that, we had no, I had no idea what to expect watching it. And I, I think the, the anxiousness that you feel and that I've heard from some other athletes who did it as well is if you think it went okay, it can be worrisome to watch it and see that, oh, actually it wasn't as good as I thought it was. And then you kind of have that yucky feeling that we should have had five weeks ago when we did it, you know? So it was strange. Watching was the least, my least favorite part. Mike and I were trying to make it normal. We were texting each other our key things that we say to each other before we compete, before we washed ourselves, which was like kind of a cute way I thought to lighten the mood for me anyway. I really appreciated that from Mike, who was the initiator of that as per usual, the nice stuff usually Mike, but um, waiting for the score was just awful, <laughs> just terrible. The only benefit I will say is our short program score took a while and Ted Barton, who is amazing at uh, commentating all of these things was saying, oh, the technical panel is looking at this or that. And so we, we could kind of be like, oh, okay. So that's why it's taking long where when you're in the kiss and cry, you, you don't have the advantage of knowing why it's taking a while. That was the only good part. The rest of it was just like this. <laughs> yeah, that month gap was uh, quite the wait to uh, see what our scores were gonna be. We had no clue it could have been 10, 15 points, either direction. We really had no idea what to expect. That was probably the uh, hardest part of the event. Everything felt like a real competition. We did our warm up in the morning, came back, skated, but then taking off the skates with no closure, no placement, no score, everything felt good until taking off the skates. Then it was just like, uh, okay, what's next? Yeah, it was so strange. I loved it, but it was strange. It was it's nice like, to watch skating. Yeah. Um, and from like an audience perspective, it actually looked like a real event um, mm -hmm. besides everyone competing in different ranks. Yeah, they did a great uh, <laughs> of that for sure. So what is something you've taken for granted in the past that you've grown to appreciate a lot more now? I think um, it's the just the daily grind for me, especially... Um, you know, when 2021, when the, the ball dropped to 2021, it became extremely apparent to me that, um, you know, my retirement is likely in 2022. And that gives me roughly 365 days left of something that I love doing so, so much. And I think I've taken that for granted in the past because the days are always limitless, you know, like I always just have so much time left to fulfill um, all these things that I would like to get done and to appreciate the days. Like I don't need to appreciate it now because there's just so much time left and, and time is fleeting. I think the only thing really we can count on is kind of things ending. And because of that, I just am so grateful and happy to skate. I'm grateful that 
in this lockdown that Ontario has that we're still able to touch the ice every day. We feel super lucky to be among the very few athletes who can do that. And I just, I'm finding joy in, in each day that I skate with Mike. And I think that that is the biggest, the biggest takeaway or the biggest blessing of all for me through all of this. Yes. Uh, just being grateful that we still get to uh, do this sport every day that we love. We, uh, I knew I loved figure skating before this, but after getting off the ice for three months, I realized that it was times 10 what I uh, thought it was. Mm -hmm. And so just being appreciative that uh, in my late 20s, I still get to go to the rink and figure skate every day as if I was five years old. Mm -hmm. So just uh, trying to enjoy uh, the final couple steps here and just being thankful uh, that we're on the ice because even uh, in Canada still, there's still some people that are not able to touch the ice. So we are definitely not taking uh, one second out there for granted. So lastly, do you have any advice for young skaters? I think it's <laughs> <laughs> that the time is fleeting and, and we're so lucky to be able to do this each day, something that we love so much and to not get wrapped up in, in the little things. Always remember the big picture and, um, I heard a quote by you actually, Caitlin, once where I heard you say progress versus perfection. And it, had, and it has really been a change for my life because when we alleviate the stress of being perfect all the time and focus on small progressions each day, these small progressions add up to really big things. And I think that if I learned that when I was a little bit younger or a little bit earlier in my career, I could have, I could have really benefited from that. My biggest advice would just to be control the controllable, kind of my go-to saying there's so much out of our control happening right now that can lead to a lot of frustration and a lot of uh, negative thoughts and a lot of bad energy, which is just all exterior. And so just controlling uh, what we can control and focusing on ourselves and not letting all of that uh, outside noise uh, creep into our daily lives as much as possible. Perfect. That's everything. Um, so I want to thank you guys so much for this. It was fantastic. Thank you.